Is this working? Yeah, it is. Okay, shall we begin? We, we'll we'll yes. begin right now. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. I'm Alessio Iago, I'm a tech journalist. I will introduce this classroom we're going to have here with Max Mordeluso, who is uh, um, lead evangelist for Alexa product and services in Europe. Um, this is going to be a classroom about how to leverage the consuming of news with technology, and uh, we're going to discover a lot of things about Alexa, the products, the services. We were here exactly one year ago. Now we're back to talk about what Alexa is today in Italy. One year ago, we talked, uh, we've been talking about what Alexa will do and will be here in this country. Now we have a lot of things to, uh, to tell, a lot uh, uh, of scenarios to explain. It's going to be a very deep classroom about what can publisher, journalists, and content creator do with Alexa. So um, um, at the end of the, um, this classroom, we will have a, a short time for a Q and A. Uh, so uh, just join us on, uh, on the stage and tell the story, Max, please. Great, thank you. Thank you, Alessio. All right, so um, very happy to be here again, uh, one year later. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, uh, Alessio and I share a, a passion for, uh, for innovation, for technology. And uh, we also share the, the idea that uh, when you look for innovation, it's, uh, there is a fantastic source, uh, a very entertaining source as well, which is science fiction. So some of us grew up reading uh, Marvels of the Futures, uh, flying cars, talking cars, uh, talking computers, uh, uh, flying hoverboards, or, or, or droids, or drones, or a anything. If you think about it, in those terms, there is a lot of innovation that has been already presented, a lot of ideas that are already uh, given to us by science fiction writers. So, but I just wanted to say this, uh, even before I, I introduce myself, because Alessio already introduced, I'm part of Amazon, Alexa. Uh, I work in Europe uh, to, uh, to share what can be built today with, uh, with Alexa, what delightful uh, user uh, voice interface uh, can be created today. So, um, Alexa, uh, let's start from this. How many of you are familiar with Alexa? Who has, in, uh, who has interacted with an Echo device? Okay, so, great, thank you, by the way. So, <laughs> the uh, Alexa, for those uh, that have not used it yet, uh, is a cloud-based voice service uh, that uh, the powers uh, uh, Amazon-made uh, Echo devices uh, and uh, uh, a whole lot of other um, uh, Alexa-enabled devices, and we'll talk more about that later on. So, the, a couple of takeaways just to get started. So the fact that Alexa is a cloud-based service means that uh, she develops, uh, uh, she gets smarter f with every interaction. Every interaction that Alexa has uh, with uh, human beings, uh, every conversation, she learns. This is machine learning, it's a lot of other things, uh, but it's very important to understand that, that uh, the fact that it's, uh, it's cloud-based allows for this development that serves a better and better and better human beings. Now, uh, Italy uh, has, uh, uh, or Alexa has uh, finally gotten to Italy in uh, October 2018, so about six months ago. But let's, uh, let's uh, build in again on this theme that science fiction, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic source, and when we can materialize and pred the prediction that science fiction gave, uh, gives us, uh, we actually do a lot, and there is a lot to be done. So this is a third law from Sir Clark. The point here is that if you do voice uh, user interfaces right, it becomes magic. Think about this, you are talking with a computer, and a computer talks back. So now it's becoming very, very normal. It's, it's my day life. It's been a day life for several years now, but it, it is marvelous. So if we do it right, uh, you forget actually what you're doing specifically, and then a very natural phenomenon uh, kicks in. But how did we get here? So we got here, uh, uh, I would say, with three, uh, observing three main trends. So the first trend was uh, that uh, if you feed big data to machine learning, uh, phenomenal things happen. You can predict, uh, uh, you can forecast, uh, you can actually adapt uh, to the way that human beings speak, for example. So machine learning. The second one, the cloud, I already mentioned that uh, we needed for this fantastically complex calculations unlimited, virtually unlimited power, vir computing power, virtually unlimited storage, and that is given to us by the cloud. 
And then, obviously, the, the third trend is uh, voice. Voice is natural. So we start uh, uh, early with voice. We are accustomed to use it. We hear it since birth, even before birth, actually. And uh, we gauge the developmental stage of uh, new human beings uh, with the way that they can communicate uh, most often with voice. All of this to fulfill our dream as a child uh, to speak with a machine. Absolutely, it definitely was mine. So, yeah. and uh, Star Trek... So was mine. Uh, yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's really good, that's why I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Star Trek, for example, let's remember this. Yeah. So, we, we're talking about science fiction. We're talking about something that uh, was created more than 50 years ago and dreamed that some other things were created around that time. Uh, a computer, a, an entity that you can just uh, speak with forgetting in, and of speaking into a specific device. So you speak uh, into your ambient. That could be a, a home, a office, a car, uh, the, the enterprise deck, uh, what have you. But that is the concept, right? And because voice at the end of the day is the opposite of this. So I'll give you a second just to, to absorb this. So we have a we have a high technology here, fantastic technology. We all use it. We all have it in our pockets, at least one of them. So this is a supposed social setting. But with this very personal technology, we are very isolated. And I'm not saying that a mobile is bad. By, by no means, I'm saying that. I'm just saying that this is a very personal technology that does not necessarily foster natural communication like voice. If we have a voice game here in this case, uh, this is uh, social by definition. Most of us can hear voice. Most of us can speak naturally. So that's what we have been build, building on. Now, interfaces. Interfaces with technology and machines and computers have been evolving. We tried a few things. We tried touch. Uh, we tried uh, um, uh, typing, obviously. We tried moving things around. Uh, but the point is, uh, there has always been a lot to learn. With voice, uh, when we get it right, uh, it becomes natural. You forget that you're actually talking to a machine because you're talking to your natural way. I speak in my own way, Alessio speaks in, in his own way, and so on. Everybody is different. And if you arrive to interact with the technology in a way that is natural, that becomes truly that magic that Clark was saying about. And ab above all, you keep doing what you were doing. Exactly, very important. So there is a, a, a multi-dimensional component uh, that you can keep doing things uh, while you're using voice to interact with the machine. But the main takeaway for this slide is you are living today, we are all living today, the initial phases of uh, one of these epochal change. Think about uh, having developed one of the first websites or one of the first uh, mobile apps. That's where you are here right now. You have the opportunity to build uh, the first uh, fantastic voice interfaces. And this has, been on, uh, uh, this has been possible since we released the Alexa Skills Kit, and I'll tell you more about that later. So the opportunity is now, and this is one of the few times in our life that we have the possibility of entering uh, on the ground zero of something that is gonna change the world, and is changing the world. Now, since uh, uh, we uh, released uh, Echo in 2014, the first Echo in the United States uh, at the end of 2014, uh, we have been working to implement our uh, vision of putting Alexa everywhere our customer wanted. So, there should be no rules. If I want to speak with my uh, Alexa on my phone, or on my cap, or on my fridge, or on my car. It should be my choice as a consumer, as a user of this technology. So this is what we mean by, impl by the vision of having Alexa everywhere. But to do that, we need third parties. And we'll see the frameworks that we have created to actually leverage uh, and to partake from the innovation and invention that everybody else brings to this technology. Since we launched Alexa uh, in 2014, as I said before, currently Alexa is available in 14 different countries. Uh, you can see the flags there since uh, uh, six months ago in Italy as well. The point, uh, the takeaway for this slide uh, is that by being able to learn continuously, Alexa has an incredible richness uh, from the diversity of all these people speaking, from all the people in the world speaking with different accents, with different languages, and so on. So this is very important. So to provide, uh, or to work in towards providing uh, uh, the capacity of understanding all of us in the way that we speak. But let's move into how can you actually build on this technology. So this is a busy slide. There's basically three parts to it. So there is a, a, a segment here uh, on, on the top right uh, that basically shows uh, possibilities of putting uh, Alexa into products. 
you can build products with Alexa in, or you can integrate your products uh, with Alexa. Let's say you're a, pro or a manufacturer of a smart home uh, device, uh, and then you can do that. Let's say you're a media service provider. You can interface uh, with Alexa, you can create uh, uh, Alexa skills, uh, you can uh, uh, partake, or at least you can uh, uh, make available to your customers uh, your content uh, through these uh, uh, frameworks. And then uh, the Alexa skills kit, this is how you build, this is how you expand uh, the feature set uh, uh, that Alexa has. So let's talk more about skills, because this is, uh, is going to be the, the main focus of this session. Now, an Alexa skill is uh, uh, the voice equivalent of a mobile app. So this is the simplest way of saying. So this is something that you enable on an Alexa-enabled device, uh, and then uh, uh, as a developer, you can create uh, a number of experiences. There is several skills types. Uh, there is custom skills, there is a smart home skills, there is flash briefing skills, uh, and a lot more. But the point is that you add features, you make Alexa becoming something else. You want Alexa to become a ride-sharing service, like Uber, or an entertainment uh, platform, or an entertainment platform, or a storyteller, or something that manages the lights in your house. This is how you do it, via a skill. There is a lot of brands that are building skills now, and have been built skills now. So currently there is more than 80,000 skills available via the Alexa Skills Kit. Uh, in Italy, uh, there is, uh, since launch, uh, uh, skills have grown 4x, uh, and now we have more than 2,000 skills available. So these are, as, we say, as I said before, this is the opportunities to build on today. Let's walk through a customer journey. So the important point here is not to build a skill just to build a skill you have to do something for the customer. So there is a very strong utilitarian This is a approach. customer journey, uh, an Italian customer journey. Yes. It works yes. here, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. So this is... Uh, that's this a big is difference from the, the last year. Yeah. Yes, that's, div that, that's a absolutely great point, Alessio, because uh, the difference is that now that we can uh, uh, show you how the specific uh, experience for an Italian-based customer or anybody that is using an Italian uh, Alexa could be. So. You, you start from the morning, then you progress uh, through the day. You start consuming entertainment or news. Then you might call uh, a, a transportation service. You can make sure that the house stays in the state that you want it uh, by leveraging the connection to your smart home and so on. We recognize uh, some of the brands here. Now, the point uh, is uh, that you have to do something for the customers. You have to make that available uh, a set uh, of uh, services or products, like Junti Editore, for example. So here, and we placed it after dinner because Junti is doing a, a very, very nice uh, kids story, amongst other things, on Alexa. So these are useful things. So these are things that address a need that the customer has. Or Giallo Zafferano, for example, that, that's before dinner. And I believe that you used one of those. Yeah, I've been cooking in front of our camera with Giallo Zafferano, I'll try to. Yes. <laughs> it was very good. I am a bad cook, but anyway. So, yeah, that, and that's a good point, I guess, then you're, you're, you're a good addressable uh, user. It for was that. driving me step by step, and it was very good, I mean. Yeah, and so Giallo Zafferano, for example, is, uh, uh, is a, a skill that presents recipes step by step with instructions, on, uh, with ingredients, uh, and is both uh, uh, very usable on voice only. Uh, this, which, which version did you use? Did you use the voice version? Uh, or at least voice, the voice, voice only or voice the augmented. Only. Yep. And I'm, briefing, uh, and I'm uh, bringing that up because uh, we, as you might have seen before in the lineup of, uh, of Echo devices, so we have Echo devices with a screen now. So it is called the Echo Show or the Echo Spot uh, available uh, uh, throughout the world. And the point here is uh, that you can do things uh, to, uh, to augment the service that uh, you're providing to the customer. Think about uh, the, the, the minimum lovable product, as we say in Amazon, has to be to provide uh, Alessio and anybody else with the recipe of what they want, that you can follow, that you have something that you can act upon. But there is an additional step of the light. Let's say that I want to see how the plate is supposed to look. Let's say that, uh, how, that I have no idea uh, how a pasta carbonara is supposed to look. Well, that's a better example, perhaps, for some of us here. But, but you get the point, right? So you want to see something specific. You want to ha add that visual component. Uh, you can do so. There is a number of ways to, uh, of uh, specific instruments to do so. 
as this is a, a, a journalist-focused uh, uh, event, uh, let's talk about how to partake uh, news uh, on Alexa. There is a lot of different ways. Uh, uh, one of the core one is the flash briefing. So the flash briefing uh, API is a way of creating uh, um, uh, news uh, and to have your customers, your listeners, to select. Think about a menu. Think about uh, you are in a restaurant with a lot of items. Uh, you can select uh, as many items as you want and you can consume them in that order that you select. Or you can skip some of them while you are actually uh, consuming them. So flash briefings uh, are short, uh, time sensitive uh, and relevant uh, pieces of information that your customers want to consume. For example, in my own flash briefing list, uh, I do have the Daily Show, uh, I do have NPR, I do have Reuters News, uh, in the order that I prefer. And I can change them around, I can add more, I can remove them and so on. So we have some of these uh, that are shown up here. These are flash briefings uh, that are doing particularly well. They have listened to customers, that have adapted, that have used some of the best practices. And what are some of these best practices and tips? So, there is nothing, you probably know this better than me, there is nothing like stale content to turn away your customers. So, you have to make sure that your flash briefings are updated frequently. You have to make sure that uh, your content is fresh. You also have to make sure that your content uh, is quick to consume. So, the, this vehicle, the flash briefing, uh, is to be um, providing news information in pills, in easy to digest, easy to consume, get to the point, uh, short. These are not uh, the vehicle for deep uh, uh, engaging stories where you actually go into uh, the topic very deeply. There is something else for that and I'll, I'll tell you in the next slide. But the point is that you keep your content short and to the point. Now. This is nothing, yes. new, uh, nothing newer than what we do when we do short news uh, on a, a newspaper or on the radio. The difference here is that uh, you're listening to a radio with talks w uh, which talks you back. So there is this level of interaction, you can stop it, you can uh, let's start it again, you can ask for more. So this is the difference, but I think, and then maybe we can ask later to the, to the public that, that the kind of work uh, in, a, in a newsroom uh, that is needed to prepare this, uh, it's quite similar to something we already we are already doing. Absolutely, absolutely great point. Uh, you have this already in this format. That, that is exactly the point. And it's funny you say a, rad a radio that you can talk to because uh, a little personal anecdote. My grandma used to talk to the radio occasionally when when she didn't know that I was perhaps seeing her or listening. So we actually got that. We, we actually got to the point of having a, a device uh, that you can speak with. Uh, and there is no shame any longer in doing that because the radio actually now talks back and it can interact with you, can uh, make sure that you have that level of conversation, that level of service that you do want. So, yes. Yeah, but what, what, was, what was I was say before is that uh, because the first thing you think is I got to do this too. You're already doing this. Absolutely. So you have that content in that it's format. Just a this is absolutely important. a different way to monetize important. it, yes. and we'll get to that back later. Ab absolutely, yes. We'll definitely get to that. So, and also list the feeds uh, that your flash briefing has in the skill description. So, a skill is discovered by users or listener in a marketplace. So similar to our Amazon.com, .it, .de, there is a, an area of the website where you can browse, or your customers or users can browse all that is available. And uh, your skill, your flash briefing skill, will have a page, will have a description page. So one absolutely simple, uh, but that some people forget, uh, make sure that you have uh, the feed description in that description page. So very, very important, so that your user will know what they're getting. Now, also, try to choose uh, uh, error messages that are meaningful. So things uh, that actually reduce the friction. Things uh, that, uh, uh, these are simple, these are simple phrases. Uh, your editorial team will have a, a lot of other things to work uh, because uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is something that is super easy but it, pr it, it changes entirely the experience of, uh, of somebody using a flash briefing. So something like, uh, if your feed is not available for any reason because the RSS feed or, or any other source uh, is not available, make sure that you account for that. Gracefully handle any possible error with uh, some error message that makes sense. And then the last one is that uh, avoid advertising and plugs. 
So there are ways and ways of doing that. But think about, uh, remember actually, that it's very easy for users to disconnect and to want to move away or to change or to move out if you have uh, a longer than uh, interesting or a longer than uh, engaging uh, time frame. And that time frame is absolutely short. A designer last year in, in, in London told me that uh, human beings in average get impatient after 0.4 seconds after something that is, they think uh, is supposed to produce a reaction doesn't. So think about a light switch. If you don't get something back then, right away in 0.4 seconds, uh, you lose your patience and you do something else. So this applies the same here. So keep that in mind. Don't unburden unnecessarily the user with this. Now, some uh, best practices. This differ from uh, the previous uh, uh, screen. The previous screens were best practices for flash briefing specifically. Now, these are for how to partake with your users the information that you have, your media, your news, your content. Both, the first one says leverage both skills and flash briefing. So what does that mean? I mentioned before that flash briefings are little short peels of content that could be time sensitive, they are relevant for the user on the moment. But you also have uh, enormous catalogs and libraries of things that all of your editor and content producers have worked on, hours and hours and hours of content that goes deep, deep into specific and important topics. The way you surface them, you write a custom skill. You write a skill that gets enabled slightly differently than a flash briefing, but I can ask my Alexa, I say, enable uh, that specific name, enable uh, CNN. CNN has both uh, a flash briefing and a custom skill. Then once in, I am in the custom skill, I can search for what is relevant for me, and then I can consume it for a longer time. So you have two vehicles, short news, to the point, time sensitive, flash briefing, longer, deeper, investigation on specific topics, uh, custom skills. So that's what the first line means. And you have to use both if you have that sort of content, which most likely you do have. Now, there is a time factor here, and I'll go later on at the end of the presentation, I'll give you a specific tool that you can use to reach your customers. But nowadays, uh, I learned from last year, uh, here in, in Perugia from some of the directors that uh, there is definitely confirmation that customers want to have the news that they want at the time that they want, at the time that that happens. And there are mechanisms to do this. So remember the time factor. And this goes back also to the staleness that you have to avoid. And now, the last thing, you have to promote your skill, the access, as part of your entire campaign. Make the invocation name with which customers can find your skill, part of your entire campaign. Make that invocation name one of your new hashtags on your campaigns so that you resolve the problem, you address the issue of having the customers not knowing that your skill is there, or even worse, not knowing how to launch it. Because remember, the friction in this sets very quickly, so you have to avoid that. Now, we've been talking uh, a lot of tools for mostly for developers. Uh, you, uh, flash briefings are really, real simple. You don't need that you have a, a very a extensive developer skills to actually write those uh, uh, flash briefings. You just have to point them to a source, uh, and you can really do that uh, in about two minutes. And that's exactly the part uh, because of what I said at the beginning: journalists, publishers, and content creators, because. because this is the way you open the platform, let me call it a platform uh, for content delivering uh, to everyone uh, in a simple way, which is a step ahead, very important. Uh, yesterday we were joking, I told him, you are doing the WordPress of voice. Of voice. Uh, maybe it's a stretch, but it's, it, it gives the idea, does it? Yeah, your words though, but yes. Yeah. The idea is that one, for sure. But the point, you're absolutely right. The point is that you make it easy for storytellers to make their content available, to share the delight. And another, uh, ways of doing, another way of doing this uh, is what we call, uh, what we created and called uh, the Alexa Skills Blueprint. So these are templates 
that you fill with content uh, on a very simple dialogue forms, depending on uh, the specific template, uh, and then uh, you create skills without having to develop anything. It, the, all the development part uh, is done for you. We decoupled the development part uh, from uh, the content creation, the, the content insertion into the skill. So very, very easy way of sharing your content and then to put it directly into the marketplace. Now, I've already mentioned uh, uh, that we, our vision, we want to have uh, Alexa everywhere. We want to have Alexa everywhere, the customers want it. And uh, that includes uh, uh, a lot of different places, ideally all the places where we spend our times. But to do that, uh, we need uh, uh, third party, we need the third party inventions. And uh, here I wanted to give you some, some numbers, some of the recent numbers that we do have, uh, uh, that we are sharing publicly. So I'll give you a second to absorb them. But, uh, if you check this out, 150 plus products with Alexa built in, 90% of which are not made by Amazon. So this is exactly what we wanted. This is exactly the product of making available for free frameworks that you can build the products with. And there is a, there is a lot of products uh, out there that I'll show you in the next slide. Also here on the development, I already mentioned 80,000 plus skills available. Hundreds of thousands of developers are building skills throughout the world. There is no rule that says uh, that if you're an Italian developer, you can't build uh, a skill in Japan or in Canada. If you have something that the customers want uh, and you have the know-how for that specific uh, uh, language, you can do anything from anywhere else. And uh, developers are building these experiences for more than 180 countries. So uh, these are open frameworks that we use. Then going back into what uh, we can build uh, with Alexa, there is a lot of different uh, uh, opportunities there. So uh, partners and developers are building and manufacturers are building uh, uh, products, a, a huge variety of products. So if you see here, the form factors, uh, there is more than 50 different form factors. We're going from cars, uh, to speakers, uh, to headsets, uh, to monitors, uh, to jackets, uh, to faucets. Uh, these are all pr real products, actually. You can check them out. Now, uh, your customers will decide what works better or not. So, but the point is that, uh, that you have a possibility to enabling with voice uh, any uh, That's a lack of working with voice. Uh, you can use uh, every form factor uh, you want. It's not like video, like that. Yes, absolutely. Please. Because the point uh, is that, that you want to cover, uh, again, everywhere your customers might be. And this is in line with verticals, the verticals that uh, your customers are using. So these are some of the, the verticals that uh, developers and manufacturers are building um, voice-enabled products as of today. So there is my main car manufacturer, for example. There is a, a Audi, BMW, Ford. Uh, there is a, a headphones, Bose. Uh, uh, they are very, very delightful experience. For example, they have Alexa built in on the uh, on the go. So it, it's pretty it's pretty interesting to be able to access it. And again, your customers are demanding this. Now. I briefly covered before about the, the visual component that uh, makes uh, uh, things even more delightful, more uh, interesting for customers. Uh, you're seeing here uh, some of the, uh, the Echo devices uh, from the Echo family. And uh, you see that uh, there, is, uh, there are devices without a screen, but there is also a device with a screen. And uh, the point is that uh, um, a rich array of products uh, makes it even more possible for customers to reach, uh, to interact with Alexa. And uh, to make sure that developers had full control to do what customers want in the most visually appealing way possible, we have created and designed a new um, language, it's the Alexa presentation language, which is, uh, which is rich, uh, is flexible, and uh, very, very importantly, gives the possibility of writing once uh, and then running it across all these devices with a screen. And uh, the visuals are important too, especially, again, if you, are, if you have media, if you have rich media to share, if you have things uh, that you want your customers to be able uh, uh, to see and to get more. There are things uh, that uh, uh, work beautifully in voice. There are other things uh, that uh, we can't remember. 
uh, a best practice, a very basic uh, and uh, very important best practice, is that if you have a, a, a too long list being read to you, you're not going to remember. There is a skill in uh, uh, the UK, it's called the BBC Good Food. They have found a brilliant solution to a problem. Let's say I want to cook uh, chicken. Uh, and I'm being given uh, a few options. I have a chicken biryani, a specific style. I might have a chicken in a different style. And I'm given three or four options. Then I have to give back just a number that I heard. Did I like the first, the second, or the third? And this is because our short-term memory, especially mine, is absolutely not a great tool. So you have to account for that. And you have to enrich uh, this experience, if you can, with, with visuals, and this is what you have uh, the possibility of doing with this framework. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to show you something that we've been, uh, uh, we've been working on too. So we heard uh, uh, from customers that um, there was a need for even more um, interactive experiences and more natural experiences when Alexa narrated. So Alexa uses inside there's something called uh, a TTS. I just realized that I don't have the audio jack. And actually, it's my fault. I say that I did not have any audio, but I do have any audio. So if you give me. Yes. Oh, yeah, I can do that the way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we can definitely do that that way. So the point uh, uh, that I was making, yeah. So Alexa uses uh, something called a TTS, uh, which is a text-to-speech uh, uh, service uh, that translates text strings uh, into uh, into uh, audio. But we heard uh, that sometimes uh, there was a need of a f more engaging tone. So check this out. We've done we've done something called uh, neural TTS. San Francisco's $2.2 billion Grand Central Terminal open. Spanning three city blocks, San Francisco's $2 billion transit terminal is open. This is after nearly San Francisco. This is a standard one. This is the New Orleans uh, TTS. San Francisco's $2.2 billion Grand Central Terminal open. Spanning three city blocks, San Francisco's $2 billion transit terminal is open. This is after nearly. So you see the difference here, so the, or you hear the difference. Uh, the difference is that uh, it's, uh, it's possible now with uh, simple uh, programmatic uh, directives uh, to leverage uh, an enhanced uh, TTS, a service that is going to read your content uh, in a very uh, natural way that is going to provide more delight and reduce friction for customers when they hear and when they consume the, no uh, the news. Now, the point is also that I have uh, stuck my presentation. San yeah. No, enough with San Francisco. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So now continuing on the TTS, you are probably are all familiar with the text uh, speech service. You're probably all familiar with the saying that one picture is worth a thousand words. Similarly, in voice, uh, the right voice, uh, as we saw before, or the right uh, sound effect could be worth a thousand words. So you have a possibility when you uh, create a skill to go two basic uh, extreme routes. One, you can use uh, a TTS. You can use Alexa to narrate your skill, which is going to provide you uh, a, with a very, very nice uh, uh, possibility of, uh, of adapting dynamically to what your user is saying. Think about I say something to a skill, the skill echoes it back. This is programmatic and it's done on the run, so you can leverage 100% that dynamism. The other side of the spectrum, you can voice record your entire experience. Let's say that you want to produce a score, a, a music score underlying with special effects and so on, and a fantastically engaging uh, voice narrator. But the problem is that once you have to change that to adapt it, to evolve it, you have to call that narrator back, that voice actor. And not everyone, not every organization might have the opportunity to do. And also, you cannot do that dynamically. So that's why something like uh, Polly, so Polly is a, is a service from uh, Amazon Web Services that programmatically enable any skilled developer to use currently up to 27 different voices in all locales supported. So it means that uh, your skill can include multiple voices talking to each other. Are these enabled in all the languages uh, Alexa is working at now? Yes, yes, absolutely. And there is voices that are uh, very, very... Uh, 
very natural, as we heard, and think about the possibilities of creating uh, stories uh, with different narrators inside. So for if you have content to share, so a lot can be created, and you're starting to have a lot of, uh, of these building blocks to create these experiences. Before I mention uh, how I had learned uh, last year that uh, customers or listeners or users want to have the news uh, relevant to them uh, on time, on the timely fashion. So they want to be pushed what is important for them. So we heard that, and uh, amongst other needs, uh, we, have created, uh, we have created this API, so this Proactive Events API. So this is an API, uh, an API is a set of tools for developers that make it possible to notify your customers that there is something important for them happening. Then Alexa will send them a notification, there will be an yellow ring that notifies that there is something relevant for them, and they will be notified of a time-sensitive event. So you can push your alerts. There is something specific that you know a customer is interested in that is happening in the world, that's how you notify them with this API. Now, Monetization. Monetization. So we're talking talk. to people who like to make money producing this content, delivering it. Yes. So we, we're continuing to, to explore ways for developers uh, to make money, for developers and brands to make money with Alexa. So these are some of the things that we have available in, in, uh, uh, in the US, for example. It's something called in-skilled purchase. So these are ways, uh, three different kinds, as you can see. We have one-time purchase, so these are things that become uh, uh, the property of your user and you have to maintain. There are, there are recurring subscriptions uh, or there are things like consumables. And uh, so these are ways to uh, operate transactions uh, of digital goods and services uh, inside your skills. This is how you, one of the ways that you can monetize from your premium content. So this is how the way you can extend uh, a, a playful experience if you are a producer of such a thing. There is also things like uh, Amazon Pay. In the UK, for example, there is uh, Virgin Trains that has, that has created a skill in using uh, uh, Amazon Pay. And uh, they have... Uh, um, given the possibility to users to find a ticket, to browse tickets, to find a ticket, and to completely uh, perfect the transaction, to close out the whole transactions without pulling up your payment credentials. Because that skill leverages through Amazon Pay the payment credentials that Amazon user has already. So very, very frictionless experience for, for the users. We also have uh, things like developer rewards, which incidentally, is uh, uh, available here in Italy as well. We recently released it to France, Italy, and Spain. So this is a program that rewards monetarily the developers of the most engaging skills in eight categories, currently eight categories. So you have the possibility, if you have a developer of a, of a very, very popular skill, Amazon will pay you. Amazon will give you monthly uh, rewards for your work. Also, uh, turning towards the end, uh, I wanted to, to, to make you think a second about the new use cases, the new business cases that uh, uh, this technology is offering, is providing us. One of my uh, most interesting uh, uh, theme that I'm exploring this year is uh, how Alexa could make the life uh, of the elderly and disabled people more independent, better. So think about somebody that has uh, uh, physical mobility issues. Uh, think about uh, the, 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 what is for some of us a luxury of being able to command our thermostat or our lights without having us uh, to stand up from the sofa could be a life-changing opportunity for somebody that actually has to stay on a chair. Or think about uh, being uh, able to develop skills uh, that put together elderly. When we age, we don't stop to have a social we don't, want, we don't stop to have the will to have social interactions, to consume the news and social companionship in the way that, uh, that we want, right? We only miss the opportunities. And there are possibilities with this technology to create exactly that, to make sure that uh, we extend the independence of, yeah. uh, of elderly. Of course, this doesn't mean we don't need to go uh, on caring of them, caring no. about them. It's You're just right. helping us to do that better. Absolutely. I mean, the fact is that uh, we are aging. If we're lucky, we age. And this is a fact. There is a lot of elderly today. There is not as many caregivers. So this technology can help. Does that substitute human beings, human-to-human -human contact? Absolutely not. But 
There is some power in being able to vocalize thoughts and to speak out loud, right? So, and this is a technology can help us doing that. So there are, there are a lot of things, a lot of opportunities to be building that, both building on a goodwill and actually for a good business purpose. With that, uh, thank, I thank you very much. Uh, and uh, if you have questions, uh, we're going to be here. I have just one more question and we will leave it to the audience. But um, you didn't address this part, but uh, I think it's always need to be addressed, uh, privacy. You know, when you talk about Alexa, when you talk about uh, privacy, digital yes. assistant, uh, privacy is always an issue. Uh, but it mustn't be, you say. Explain that. Well, it, privacy is, uh, is a big question from our customers, and I get it pretty much every day when I'm on the road doing events. So for, for Amazon, privacy is, uh, is a priority because privacy is trust, and trust is everything. So we started building from the ground up uh, in, in our Echo devices uh, uh, privacy controls, privacy layers. We took a layer approach, a multi-layer approach, because uh, what works for me is not perhaps going to be working for you or for other people. So what we did is that uh, this multi-layer approach uh, is going to, for example, the first layer is that any time you want to speak with Alexa, you have to say a wake word. So Alexa does not listen all the time streaming out on cloud. So Alexa streams on the cloud only when you say that keyword. So the wake word, we call it. So that's very important because uh, until then, uh, there is nothing streamed up on the cloud. And that's first layer. The second layer is that when the streaming actually takes place uh, and Alexa takes uh, what you say to her to the cloud to elaborate, to compute, to extract that intention, there is a visual feedback. An echo device uh, will always light up uh, when to signal that there is this, uh, this uh, streaming taking place. And that's layer two. Then uh, layer three, is that we give back control to the user of everything Alexa heard directed to her. So you can go into the mobile app, into the web app, uh, and have uh, uh, a look in what Alexa heard, and you can delete it. You can delete piece, one, uh, all of them, uh, your preferred. Of, of, of course, uh, for us, that's machine learning. That's a data set for machine learning. We hope you keep it. But it's, the choice has to be yours. Then the final is that if you really don't want Alexa to hear not even the wake word, you have uh, an electrically disconnected mute button that is going to make Alexa In, my, in my opinion, people have to learn how to manage their privacy because it's a compromise. The more you give, the more you get in, in exchange. So it's just what you want to have and how do you want to manage and leverage your privacy. Are there questions? Sure. Oh, okay. Um, yes, uh, actually, two. You want me to stand up? Oh, okay. Yep, sure. Thank uh, you. A couple of questions, actually. Um, all the things that you talked about at the beginning, really interesting. You know, you get up, you listen to the news, you order your Uber, you check your heating, etc., etc. But I'm playing devil's advocate here. Um, I mean, I can do all those things on my mobile phone. Why would I need Alexa as my first, first question? And my second question relates to podcasting, uh, which there's been a huge boom in. How do you think Alexa might fit into that and perhaps make it grow even further? Thank you for your question. So, yeah, thank you, questions. Yeah, I can, I'll, I'll take the first one. So, um, well, first of all, is your choice how you, peruse, uh, how you peruse content and you interact with technology. The two things, uh, are not one or the other, first of all. They could coexist, and they very well coexist. But the point uh, of voice uh, that makes it, uh, in my opinion, uh, in certain cases better than mobile, is that the simplicity. I don't have to pull out my phone. If I am cleaning up a fish, I can just say, Alexa, how do you cook uh, uh, this specific fish? And I don't have to interact uh, with any other sense except my voice and my, and my hearing. So that's one point. The naturality of that interface uh, at times make it better and make it more rich than, uh, um, than uh, uh, touching something. Or going back into the elderly, for example, exam for example, example. So my grandma would not have been able to use a, a mobile phone. She never, she never was. But she could talk. So... And, uh, and when we're seeing this, uh, it's a very easy interaction with these devices. Sure. We'll be able to ask for the news of the day. Yes, absolutely, because you ask them in a natural voice, so that's the point. And then the second part, podcasts, absolutely. There, any great content uh, can be leveraged and perused through Alexa. There is a number of, of uh, methods that I mentioned before. There is flash briefings, there is custom skills. Uh, that uh, Alexa is a conduit of uh, all the great content that you might want to uh, share with your customers and listeners.
Is there another question? Nope. No, we, we had uh, five minutes left, so that just to say that probably the next time here doing your presentation will be Alexa, and you will be standing <laughs> sitting there. So I think... <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> it's developing that fast, maybe. I, I so, love it. So I think it's all. I hope this, will, uh, this has been useful uh, to everyone here. Thanks to Maximo Deluso for his lesson. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Alessio. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next year, and we will see we'll be standing here. <laughs> <laughs>